Hi guys, welcome to the video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you 15 useful tips and tricks when using your MacBook. Hopefully these tips will help to increase your productivity and get a lot more out of using your Mac. So that said, let's get to it. This tip is called Quick Look. If you're in your Finder window and you wanna quickly look at one of your files without having to double click it and open it fully, you can use this Quick Look feature to preview the file without having to open it properly. So you can see here that I've got the Finder window open and here I've got some files. Now, in order to use the Quick Look feature, all you have to do is select one of the files and then press and hold the space bar. This will then open a preview of the file so that you can take a quick look at it. And this works for any file type such as images or videos. And once you're done looking at it, you can then let go of the space bar and it will close down. It's a lot quicker than double clicking the file to open it, viewing what you need to view and then using the red cross to close it down. The next tip is to close down an application using a keyboard shortcut. So if I open up the calendar app here, for example, you'll see that most people use the red icon in the top left to close this down. So you can see there's a dot under the calendar app. So this isn't actually fully closed down. It's still open in the background. And of course, to close this down properly, you even need to right click on the calendar app or use two fingers and click on quit. But to save yourself some time, you can do this with a keyboard shortcut. So if I open up the calendar app again and then press command Q, this will close down the application properly without you having to right click on the icon and click on quit. Okay, so the next tip that I wanna show you is how to access your emojis keyboard on your Mac. Now, a lot of people use the emoji keyboard on their iPad or their iPhone because it's very accessible and easy to see, but not a lot of people use it on the Mac. So in order to access the keyboard on your Mac, once you've clicked into a text field, like this search bar, for example, you can then press command control space and this will open up your emoji keyboard and then from here you can use it just like you would do on your iphone so you can search for emojis or click these little icons here to go through the different emojis that you need to find so the next tip that i want to show you is how to take a more specific screenshot when using your mac now you might be familiar with the shortcut command shift 3 to take a screenshot but if you use command shift 4 you'll see that the cursor changes to this little icon and this then allows you to drag a window around anywhere on your Mac screen so that you can take a screenshot that's a lot more specific to what you need. You can then also take this one step further by using the space bar. So if you press Command Shift 4 and then the space bar, you'll see that the cursor turns into a little camera icon. You can then hover this over any window that you wanna take a screenshot of. So if I hover it over the calendar app, for example, you will then see that it takes a screenshot of that calendar app specifically. If you then open up the image that's been saved to the desktop, you can see that it's taken a perfect screenshot of that window, including the rounded corners. Now, whilst we're talking about screenshots, there's another really cool trick that you can use here. If you take a screenshot of some text and then you open up the image in the bottom right hand corner, you can use this icon here and then you're able to select all of the text within the image. You can then copy and paste this wherever you need to use it. This is really cool and saves a lot of time. Okay, so the next tip requires that you have a trackpad. So if you've got a MacBook with a trackpad, this one is going to be great for you. So you need to open up your settings and then go to trackpad here on the left. And then if you toggle on this option here that says tap to click, this will then allow you to tap on your trackpad rather than having to physically press the trackpad when you're on an application, for example. Okay, so the next tip that I want to show you is a way to get a definition for any word that you might be using. So if I open up a web page here on Safari, for example, and then if I find a word that I want to define, I can move my cursor over that word and then using the trackpad, I can force press and you will see that the word is then highlighted and a definition pops up. If you don't have a trackpad or you're using a mouse, for example, you can right click on the word and then choose look up to get the definition that way. The next tip that I wanna show you is a really easy way to use the split screen feature within Mac. So when you've got an application open or a window, what you have to do is go to the top left corner and then on the green and large icon, if you click and hold down on this, you will then get these icons to change the sizing of your application that's open. So here, for example, you can move the window to the left, move it to the right, to the top or to the bottom. And then of course, if you do this with a second application and move it to the opposite side, you can then have a split screen view. This is just an easy way to see two applications at the same time. I find this function really useful in my own work. The next tip that I wanna show you is a really easy way to open the launch pad when using your Mac. Now your launch pad is this icon down here. When you open it, it will show you all of the applications that are on your Mac. So in order to open this really quickly, all you have to do is on your trackpad, use four fingers to pinch outward to inwards and this will open your launch pad. And then if you do the same gesture on the trackpad, but going in to out, this will then close the launch pad. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show you is something for the control center. So if you open up your control center in the top right hand corner, 
you'll see a bunch of controls and toggles here. Now, if there are any of these options or controls that you use quite often and you don't wanna to have to open the control center, you can actually click and drag these controls to the menu bar at the top. So for example, if I take the volume control and I drag this to the menu bar at the top, this will then give me a little icon for instant access to it without having to open the control center first. Okay, so the next tip that I wanna show you is this function in which you can open certain files by dragging them onto the application icon. So for example, if I drag this image file onto the photo application down here at the bottom, it will then put that image straight into the photos application and then you can view it from there. This is also really useful when you're drafting emails as you can take a file and drag it straight onto the mail icon down here at the bottom and this will automatically start a new draft email and attach that file that you dragged onto it. I think this is super useful and a really good time saver. So the next thing is a tip for when you're using your web browser. If you accidentally close your browser down and lose all of your tabs, you can recover them by opening up a new browser and then pressing Command Shift T and this will reopen all of your previous tabs that you had open. Whilst we're here on the web browser, another tip is that you can press Command and left click on a link and this will open that link up on a new tab. Or if you want to open that link in a completely new window, you can press shift and then left click to open it in a new window. Now, if you're in the finder window, for example, you can select multiple images. And then if you right click, you can then convert the file type of these images to a different type. For example, a JPEG or a PNG. You can also choose to create a PDF with these files, which will automatically create a PDF with all the files that you've selected. This is a really easy way to create a PDF so that you don't have to send multiple files. For example, if you're sending an email, you can just attach one PDF with all of the files within it. And the last tip I wanna show you is one for here on YouTube. If you've got a YouTube video open and then you do two right clicks on that video, you will then see the option for picture in picture. This will then open the YouTube video in its own window, which you can then move around the screen. This is great for having YouTube videos on screen whilst you're also doing something else. And that's it guys. I hope these tips help you save some time and use your MacBook in a much more productive way. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.